we'd like to welcome you all for our webinar on clinical cases. That will be short case presentation, uh, around 10 minutes each one, and will be commented by a panel of experts. We have four experts here that will comment. Each uh, uh, case will be presented in a quiz form. That means each step will be presented and you can please put your inputs through the chat uh, region. Uh, any comment, any suggestion that we will read as we go. We have uh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ghazali Wali, the uh, Emirate Professor of Pediatric Surgery, Mansoura University, and uh, Professor Dr. Tariq Gubran, uh, Professor of Pediatric Surgery in Zagazik University, also Professor Dr. Magid Ismail, uh, Emirate Professor of Pediatric Surgery in Azhar University, and uh, Professor Dr. Ibrahim Ali Ibrahim from Asyut University. We'll start with our first case, Dr. Uh, Ahmed Mohsen, you are ready? Bismillah ar rahim The case of the case is large cyst prolapsing from the rectum. Case report. A uh, male boy aged one year and six months. He had a free medical and surgical history. The condition started since birth with just a simple rectal prolapse, which was small in size and reduced uh, spontaneously at first. Uh, the condition was aggravated through the six months after he completed his first year, increasing in size and reduced manually, most of the times only by the mother. Defecation of the child was done only after the rectum is prolapsed. So actually the, the child was nearly obstructed uh, through the, his condition of the rectal prolapse and defecation was only allowed after the rectum is completely prolapsed. However, the parents didn't seek any medical advice as the relatives reassured them that the condition will disappear later until the catastrophe happened. The rectal prolapse was completely irreducible and the parents couldn't reduce the mass as they actually do. So they rushed into the emergency hospital and that was the first presentation of the patient in our emergency unit. That was the first look, the first look of this case uh, in our uh, emergency uh, pediatric unit. As junior surgeons, we didn't uh, notice any uh, rectal prolapse with the same looks as this one. Um, through examination of, the, of this swelling, <clears throat> it showed cystic criteria over the posterior wall of the rectum. It wasn't like the, any casual rectal prolapse that we are used to deal with. Uh, as we see here, is the examination revealed cystic swelling along the posterior wall of the rectum, compressing both the rectum and the anal canal. Uh, through trying the manual reduction trials, as we usually do to, to, to the uh, rectal prolapse, they were all failed. All the manual reduction trials of the swelling failed. This is also a close lock to uh, the, uh, the cystic swelling prolapsing from the uh, anus. The question for the panelists, uh, Dr. Ghazali, uh, what, what do you think about this swelling? It, it does look like uh, a rectal prolapse. It is uh, uh, something behind the rectum, the uh, sacral pushing the posterior wall of the rectum forward that prolapses along the thigh with, with uh, uh, defecation. And it is uh, something behind the rectum causing prolapse. So I mean, it, is, it doesn't look like uh, an, uh, a rectal prolapse at all. It, a yeah, rectal it, rectal prolapse. it is prolapse secondary to the retro rectal mass. Now, uh, Okay. Uh, for Dr. Magid, what is, what is the cause of this mucosal ulceration you see in the, in the photos? Yes, I think this ulceration because of the local ischemia of the mucosa due to chronic pushing of the mucosa to the outside uh, by this basal cyst or mass. Uh, so, uh, all the, uh, as we said before, the, all the, the trials for manual reduction uh, were failed. So, uh, the only trial that we took is the, we, we took the child to the OR under complete aseptic conditions and we introduced a 10 centimeter syringe into the, uh, the, the cystic swelling that we feel on the posterior wall of the, uh, of the rectum. Reduction was only done after 
aspiration of about 30 cc of clear mucoid aspirate under complete aseptic conditions, as I said, in the OR. Uh, the aspirate was almost clear as the, 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 the syringe in the photo. Dr. Mohammed. Okay, for the, panel, I, uh, for the panelists, Dr. Ibrahim, uh, what do you think about the move of, uh, of aspiration? Is it the correct move or, or not? I think it is a good move that uh, you must uh, diagnose the, the swelling uh, to be sure that the swelling is the cystic swelling. But you, can, you, you can do a sonography, but uh, you must do aspiration. Aspiration, even, even if there's, there is a loop open distance, no problem. Uh, I think in the aspiration is a better decision. Uh, is it may be a mincious seal or... Uh... Or you can introduce infection to the, uh, an uninfected cyst. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, the aspiration has uh, uh, two reasons. Number one, to for diagnosis. Uh, number two, to reduce the size of the prolapsed mass to do reduction. Yes, this is the most important uh, cause of uh, aspiration or importance of aspiration is to reduce the mass. Yes. Doctor Tarek. Doctor Tarek. Yes. So what is the next step in management? Investigation or, or, or do you direct uh, After aspiration and reduction or before aspiration and reduction? After aspiration and reduction. Yeah. Do, you think, do you have another uh, solution uh, uh, otherwise than aspiration? The problem with aspiration, as you said, is that uh, infection, especially you don't know the, the nature of the cyst. OK. So it is reduced. So you, so you, so you agree for direct for going directly to the OR instead of aspiration? I be, I prefer. I prefer. Without I knowing I mean, the or extension of the set or whatever. A trial. I mean, yeah. After after many months of investigation, including if possible, if possible, uh, CT before admission to OR. دكتور صواف دكتور صواف لو تبص على الشات في بعض الكومنتس والسجشنز كده والاسئله ممكن تسري الدسكشن يعني. ماي ماي اي كومنت؟ ليز دكتور غزال اتفضل اي ام اجينست اسبيريشن ات اول بيكوز اسبيريشن ماي برودوس انفكشن اف ذيس كيس از انتيريور مينجوسيل ات ويل بي بيفيت بيكوز يو كان نوت جارانتي uh, uh, sepsis, uh in this condition. You are uh, going through the rectum. Whatever you do uh, uh, sterilization of the rectum, you will introduce infection. If you are sure that it is not Dr. Ghazali is the dilemma of diagnosis. Can you, yes. how can you go to the, the OR without a proper diagnosis? You should diagnose first before you go to, PR, to OR. How, how are you uh, going? You have, you have to fulfill clinical criteria at first. From the history and from clinical examination. Okay. This so is a chronic mass since the What is your suggested uh, uh, line of investigation? Before investigations, you have to fulfill all criteria of clinical examination. This is a cyst retrorectal. What is the differential diagnosis of a retrorectal cyst? This is yes. a cyst swelling, like twist. Yes, it is cystic. Now, what is the nature of this mass? Is it a retroactal abscess? Is it anterior meningo seal? Is it uh, uh, presacral uh, dermoid cyst? It is sacroxygeal teratoma type 4. All these possibilities should be put in mind. One of these possibilities is meningo seal. If you aspirate, you will introduce infection definitely. Okay. Uh, so, you should, so you prefer to go to the OR directly after what type of minimal investigation? You can do a, a, a trans uh, rectal ultrasound. You can do MRI. You prefer to avoid the CT because of the hazard of irradiation. MRI will give you a, a, a picture, a full picture about the swelling. Okay. Also, okay. clinical science, uh, if this mass is compressible or not, tender or not, uh, compressibility may run with uh, retrorectal hemangioma. 
also uh, meningo seal will be compressible meningo seal will give a very good uh, fine uh, uh, when the child defecates he will uh, uh, get severe headache during uh, defecation especially if he has constipation also yeah. uh, when he cries it becomes more tense and if, we, if the fontanelle is open is still open compression of the cyst will cause a bulging of the fontanelle yes, transillumination it may be lymphatic cyst that transillumination also may be transillumination all these are clinical data uh, reduction yes. I have commented to Saf. Please, Dr. Ibrahim. Can I comment? Please. Yes. Uh, if the swelling is compressible, uh, it will reduce on compression. The swelling, uh, uh, it is uh, previous that the swelling was a tense swelling, not a compressible swelling. The possibility of hemangioma, I think, is excluded. Uh, the possibility of uh, meningocele is still, uh, a, to some sense, a rare. I think I think if if I can if I can do uh, in Arabic if I can a sonography or uh, MRI okay if I can't give uh, I can proceed directly to aspiration. Dr. Sawaf, uh, can you have access to the chat area? Because yes, are... I am open to the chat area. I see oh. I see the question, Dr. Yeah, Sawaf. There are some interesting questions here. Yeah, there is a question. We need to fulfill uh, all the questions in the, uh, chat, from the chat room. Uh, that's ask, they're asking how you are going to investigate just a baby uh, with a prolapsed mass. Okay, so uh, Dr. Mohsen, can you complete? Okay, back again. You're, you're, uh, you're going to skip this question, Dr. Muhammad? Are you going to skip yeah. the question yeah. about how to the, investigate? The, the management, this question, the, the panelists uh, uh, have two of them with the investigation and two of them was directly to the OR. So we'll complete and we'll see. Okay. Okay, back again. Uh, as we said before, uh, aspiration was done and that was the only way that the cyst could be back or the rectum uh, could be back to its position. Uh, immediately after aspiration, the, uh, the rectum was easily put back in its position through the anus. Uh, then the patient was admitted and further investigations were done uh, for, for the patient. Uh, we, we did the following investigations. Pelvic abdominal ultrasound was done with no any abnormal data. Uh, and MRI, abdomen and pelvis, uh, was done revealing the following. Large, well-defined intramural rectosigmoid uh, cystic lesion is seen related, uh, related to the posterior wall and protruding into its lumen, causing its narrowing. It measures uh, 4.7 times 2.4 centimeters and exhibits low uh, T1 and high T2 signal intensities. Also, uh, an accidental discovery was uh, a renal tissue passing in front of the great vessels, mostly horseshoe kidney with no any uh, clinical correlation. Uh, as we see in the axial sections, the, this is the, uh, the, the intramural rectosigmoid cystic lesion. Also here, the sagittal view, it shows also posterior extension into the uh, sacroexygeal segment of the vertebral column, compressing all the lumen of the uh, rectum, causing its narrowing. Okay, so now the, the question to the panelists. So this is a new or oh, a differential diagnosis, uh, that is the duplication, rectal duplication cyst, because it shares the same wall as the rectum. Dr. Ibrahim? Yes. Uh, I, I think uh, I can wait until refilling of the cyst. Uh, after refilling of the cyst, I can make a decision to proceed. The MRI, the cyst is already filled. I, I, I can go to, uh, I think I, uh, for surgical intervention, uh, the, the content will increase and prolapse will reoccur as the rectal wall is redundant and the prolapse will occur easily. So I think I, I must interfere by something of surgical intervention. Okay, for, for Dr. Ghazali. Yes, it is not only uh, rectal, it is, is rectosigmoid duplication. 
It is the, uh, the rectal yes, from the MRI. the rectal sigmoid. Not only the rectal. Back to the MRI, Mohsen. Okay, yes, the MRI. Mohsen said it is uh, rectal sigmoid, yes? It is well, the comment, the comment by the radiologist was rectal sigmoid, but as rectal we can sigmoid, see, yes. 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 This, this yes. complication yes. involves both the rectum right. and the sigmoid colon. It is not the rectal sigmoid. Okay. I, the X-ray is only the rectum. Oh, uh, so, Doctor Ghazali, uh, do you, do you think uh, uh, there is a rule for colostomy in this patient? Temporary colostomy before uh, interference. Yeah, at the same time, colostomy and proceed at the same setting. Uh, if you need, uh, this is uh, this is not the the target. The target is to excise this duplication and do not conserve. You may need to open the abdomen because it, it involves the sigmoid also. Oh, so now yeah. the question for Dr. Abdomen Tarek. and and the retrorectal uh, uh, section. Okay, for for Dr. Combined. Tarek now it is. Uh, what is the what is so you agree for going directly to the OR? What is your preferred approach? I start first with two surgery with uh, with the uh, muscle complex preserving procedure and yes. try to excise it from the blue. Uh, otherwise, I complete it by through the trans abdominal. Okay. If I complete it from below, I go to trans abdominal. For Dr. Ghazali, what, what do you think about uh, transanal approach? No, I do not prefer transanal. Retroanal, yes. Retrorectal, the section. So uh, you directly... You similar to directly. when you are going to excise uh, sacrococcygeal teratoma retro, uh, retrorectal. Uh, for retro, uh, sacrococcygeal teratoma. You mean posterior sagittal approach? No, not posterior sagittal. Posterior sagittal, sagittal approach? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. You may need to excise the coccyx to facilitate uh, uh, the section. But you this can is enter the retrorectal space yeah. uh, uh, through this uh, way, and you may need assistance by laparotomy if it involves also the sigmoid core. But if okay, it is only retrorectal, I, 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 it will be completed through this route. Well, I agree with you if it is a pure. Uh, purely presacral teratoma or something like that. But we see the, the cyst is completely prolapsing outside the rectum. Do yes. so you think there's a, a rule for uh, a, a transanal approach? And also, we, we excluded option. the MRI, we excluded the meningocele, and we excluded the presacral cyst, and we excluded everything. So it is a, 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 a cystic. Uh, yes, this is another option. You, you can you can uh, approach it through uh, transrect. Okay. So, Dr. Ibrahim, what do you think about that? I think the best approach is the transanal approach. Okay. So, what's it? The best approach is the transanal approach. Yes. Okay. Back again. I I only want to uh, illustrate one one thing that. Uh, the comment of the erectus sigmoid lesion was described by the radiologist, but as we see through the MRI, the whole cyst is it's below the sacral promontory, and it, it's, it was almost prolapsed completely transanally. So I don't think that it involves the uh, sigmoid colon. Okay, well. okay back again. Okay, so uh, our decision uh, in the pediatric surgery unit was, uh, of course, surgical, definitive surgical treatment, and the patient was prepared for definitive surgical treatment. Only a note that uh, this child suffered from chronic blood loss anemia. As observing his complete blood count, we uh, noticed that the hemoglobin is 5.5 gram per deciliters, which was corrected through blood transfusion. I think uh, that was a result from uh, the ulcerated mucosa, the, the recurrent trials of manual reduction done by the, uh, by the parents every time the, uh, the mass was prolapsed through the rectum. Uh, now into the intraoperative photos, we uh, preferred the transanal approach. And the, the whole cyst was easily delivered uh, through the anus using the self-retaining lone star a retractor 
And as we see here, the ulceration uh, is evident on the uh, mucosa, and maybe that was because of the chronic blood loss anemia. Uh, the whole cyst could be approached through uh, the transanal approach. Uh, through opening of the posterior wall of the rectum, the whole cyst uh, and its posterior extension, as we can see here, uh, could be obtained, and it was inoculated completely, and the posterior wall of the rectum was uh, uh, closed in a simple manner. The removed cyst was sent for histopathological examination and the pathology report uh, showed rectal duplication. Please. Please, Dr. Tare. Yes. Uh, before much you will see uh, Ahmed Burisid, I want to ask him if he prepared the patient with enema or something like that, or, uh, and if he, uh, or he did uh, covering closely after the breast. No, the, the, the patient was not prepared either uh, through enemas or anything. Uh, as we said, it was uh, at the time it was an emergency, aspiration was done, then uh, the patient was admitted. Uh, and uh, through his time, the, the correction of the chronic blood lo loss anemia through blood transfusion, uh, he didn't take like uh, much more oral intake. Uh, all, all of his uh, meals were just uh, maybe clear or semi-solids only. Uh, he was one uh, year and six months old boy. So we didn't uh, perform any enemas or uh, any chemical, uh, just chemical preparation, the usual chemical preparation, and just MPO uh, 12 hours before the operation. Yes, immediately after reduction or for how long? No, the patient stays. The patient stayed in the wards for almost three days, pre-operative. Three days. So why why not prepare the Why why not? Why not Yes. The patient. Why not prepare through the enema? I think that the idea was uh, to avoid the. Uh, no, 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 not through the enema. Classical uh, preparation for uh, rectal surgery. Yeah, it was prepared chemically, but not through enema yeah, as well. This is the, a question the, for Dr. Tare. So it was prepared chemically. So yeah, yeah. It was prepared chemically, yeah, but uh, not through enema. That's okay. what I mean. I, I think mechanical preparation uh, uh, would be the, uh, difficult, would be difficult. Very difficult and yeah. injurious. Okay, Dr. Mahsin, Okay, the removed cyst was sent for histopathological examination. The, exa the, histop uh, the pathology uh, revealed a rectal cyst lined by colonic epithelium with underlying bundles of smooth muscles. No malignancy was detected in the specimen examined, so the diagnosis was a rectal duplication cyst. Okay, so the question now for the panelists, uh, uh, they did uh, complete excision. What do you think about marsupialization, Dr. Ghazali? About marsupialization? Yes. No. You say marsupialization? Yes. No, 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 no. No rule of marsupialization here. If you well, do marsupialization. If it is a, a, a rectal duplication cyst, so it has a complete wall and the mucosa lining. No, no, no rule of marsupialization. Uh, Dr. Dr. Megan, what, what, Dr. Megan, are you here? Two types of duplication system may be faced in this, communicating type or non-communicating type. This type of system is a non-communicating type. Yes. No need, no, no rule for marsupialization at all. And for myself, I prefer the posterior sacral approach to excite this system without exposing us to open the anal canal or the rectal wall. This is my opinion as regards the interference. To see the sacral approach, you can inoculate this cyst very easy without uh, opening of the anal canal or rectal wall. So do you, uh, think, that, do you think if you approach this cyst uh, from posteriorly with the inoculation, you are not going to open the rectum with this ulcerated mucosa? No, no. The particular way you can uh, avoid opening of the inner canal. And the, 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 the 
they didn't prepare the patient by the classic rectal washes and the uh, antiseptic uh, treatment. So that the posterior sacral approach, I think, may be safer and better than to open the inner canal and rectal wall. Oh, Dr. Tari, what do, what do you think about that? Yes, I agree with uh, Magid with uh, the posterior sacral approach is better than transient and just kiss. I am also worried about the inner sphincter. It's much stretchy. Yes. I'm worried about it. Okay. So uh, now the, the question, what is, what is your, your plan for follow-up for this trial? Dr. Ghazali. Uh, definitely, he may develop recurrent prolapse. So you have to, 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 to wait and also the overstretch by the prolapse along this one and a half year may have led to some sort of incontinence. So you have yes. to follow him up for continence and for the current prolapse. Yes. Thank you. So Dr. 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 Osama, Osama Nagar is raising his hand. So can you, can you, he has a comment? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Actually, it is a very uh, interesting case, and uh, I have some comments. First, any cystic lesions, I prefer to do uh, CT scan with IV or ultrasound, if possible, because uh, characteristics and criteria of the wall can give you an idea about uh, the, the origin of the cyst, any cyst. And uh, the duplication cyst is characteristic by, uh, in the CT scan with IV control is what's called intestinal stem. So you can describe five layers in the inner wall by the CT scan, and this can give you an insight about the uh, origin of this uh, cyst. Uh, this type of intramural cyst, I, have, uh, the, I was lucky to deal with two cases, and uh, uh, I uh, agree that uh, you have to approach them uh, transrectal, because if you go to see such tell, you will definitely open the rectal wall, because it is inside, in, sorry? This is what I'm saying, the, the mucosa is already denuded. Yeah, no, so yes, because this type of duplication cyst, which is an intramural type, is beneath the mucosa and not, uh, and definitely you, if you want to get it, you have to go through the rectum and you will open it, and uh, it will be uh, very difficult to do from posteriorly. Uh, to address the point of uh, uh, overstretching, uh, you aspirated once. Why you didn't aspirate it uh, again in uh, the operations? And so you will have a very uh, small uh, uh, cyst at the, after aspirations, and uh, you will not uh, show us this uh, overstretching of the anus. So overstretching of the anus here was not uh, advisable because you have to aspirate during the operation. First, the first step of the operation, before you prolapse the mask, uh, you have to aspirate it, make it very small, and then you can get it. And about uh, the treatment, you go through what, what is happening here is that you have the mucosa, uh, wall cyst, and then a mucosa of the duplication. So what you are going to do is to open all this, and then you do mucosectomy, and you close the mucosa of the rectum, and that's it. So you will not, you Maybe are not in total. It's not marcivalization in a sense. It yeah, is, you will it. open it, you will open it, the cyst mucosa from the rectal side, and then you will do mucosectomy of the duplication cyst, and then you close the mucosa again. So it is not a marcivalization in a sense that you will cut all this. No, you go okay. and do mucosectomy from the side. From inside. Sorry, yes, and then you close it. I, I did it twice, and it was very surprisingly, actually, yeah. that it uh, went very smooth. And uh, what I say is, the first step is to aspirate the cyst, not to do such an overstretch of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the anus in this patient. Thank you, Doctor Osem. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, for Doctor Ghazali, do you have a plan for follow up? You uh, you you told you, you told us this is uh, uh, the patient can develop prolapse again. So do you? Yes. So in the same setting, you are going to do something for prolapse? Maybe maybe uh, excision of. Uh, some part of the prolapse of the rectum, or uh, uh, rectal mucosectomy, you mean? Rectal mucosectomy, yes. 
because okay. uh, this prolapse is, uh, is uh, not uh, mild. And if you do not uh, deal with it during your uh, approach, uh, it will occur again. Okay. Do Dr. Ibrahim? Yes, uh, th I think uh, this is my previous question to, uh, uh, for uh, Dr. Mohsen about uh, excision of the rectal mucosa. I think I, I, I asked this question. I think uh, a part of the rectal mucosa, special posterior, must be excised to be stretched enough to uh, prevent uh, recurrent prolapse. Thank you, Mohsen. Yes, the uh, the ulcerated part of the mucosa was excised, as we see here in the in the first photo. The uh, there was unhealthy mucosa, uh, which was the the mucosa uh, uh, suffering from the chronic stretch from the underlying cyst. So we actually excised all of this uh, unhealthy mucosa. It was uh, a type of like we can say rectal mucosectomy and uh, an ablation of the whole cyst with uh, actually the cyst was lying in the submucosal plane, just opening of the mucosa, and the cyst pops out uh, through the incision. Okay. Just a comment, Dr. Sawaf, Tarek Abraham. Yes. Regarding the uh, rectal prolapse following this surgery, I think uh, uh, it will not happen because after excision, just a mass, uh, and resector fibrosis will occur, and I think it will prevent uh, rectal prolapse, further rectal prolapse. Okay, thank you, Dr. Star. That's a good point. Martin? Are you what? Finalize. Okay. Message. Okay, uh, uh, the patient uh, actually showed very smooth recovery postoperatively. Uh, he tolerated oral feeding. We start oral feeding almost uh, after uh, 24 hours post op with normal defecation. Uh, 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 also, uh, the recurrence of the rectal prolapse was. Uh, a challenge for us, but uh, uh, thank God that normal defecation happened without any rectal prolapse for four months when was his last follow-up uh, with us. Uh, also, I want to say that intestinal duplications, as we uh, all know, of course, are rare developmental anomalies that can occur anywhere along the gastrointestinal tract. The, the rectal cysts account for approximately 4% of all the duplication cysts. They usually present in childhood with uh, uh, symptoms of mass effect, local infection, or more rarely with uh, rectal bleeding from ectopic gastric mucosa. A message at the end is just the beginning of the whole scenario with just a simple rectal prolapse, but with paying some attention. It was more serious than just uh, a prolapse. That's what Mary Oliver said. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Moss. Thank yeah. you. Dr. Sawaf, uh, could I please uh, comment? Only one comment, please. Please, Radham. Yes, uh, I have a concern about the initial aspiration of this cyst. The question is, and the comment is, if you are going to see this case again, this is the question to Ahmad Mohsen, will you do aspiration first or do investigation first, if you're going to see it again? Okay, because actually I would never aspirate the cyst before doing a CT or an MRI. Thank you. Yeah, yeah actually, it's a very good point, Adam. Of course, <laughs> well, I totally agree with you. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, aspiration, of course, is, is a very good point. Point with you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the problem is that no, we are dealing with an it, emergency. He will not repeat it again, okay? <laughs> they aspirated it from the Brahman, emergency. Emergency, <laughs> emergency does not uh, justify uh, doing aspiration yes. if it's an emergency we've got ct we've got mri on emergency pages this does not justify what you know thank you thank you dr adam thank you dr mohsen for the nice presentation